Hi, I'm Mike of Mike's Road Trip, and on this episode, I'm going to share with you an extraordinary place called White Pocket, which is a great alternative to the Wave. Now, if you're not familiar, the Wave is a, an extraordinary geological wonder in northern Arizona. Unfortunately, they only allow 20 people a day to visit. So needless to say, it's pretty tough to get one of those lottery uh, permits. But not to worry, because White Pocket is equally as impressive. The downside is, though, it does require a, a four-wheel drive high clearance vehicle to get there. Uh, but they do actually have a couple of tour operators offering access, so that is certainly an option. So come along with me. And let me show you around. Get off the road! All right. I would allocate three to four days for doing this road trip, as it's quite far from Phoenix. All told, it would be over 650 miles round trip. The elevation at White Pocket is more than 4,000 feet higher than Phoenix, so it will be much cooler. From Phoenix, you would head north, past Flagstaff on Highway 89. Along the way, I highly recommend stopping a few times to see the Painted Desert. As you continue north, Highway 89 forks. To the left is 89A, which is what you want to take. Be sure to stop by the Marble Canyon Bridge for some great views. Then drive a few miles through the canyon toward Lee's Ferry, which is the end of the road and the put-in point for rafters going down the mighty Colorado River. As you continue northwest down 89A, you'll be enamored by the Vermilion Cliffs that flank the northern side of the highway. While driving along this stupendously scenic road, I recommend stopping by the Cliff Dwellers, a roadside attraction of small homes built under unique rock formations that have been eroded from the bottom. Click the link above to learn more about this area. Continuing down 89A, you'll want to turn right on House Rock Road, and this is where the four-wheel drive is required. From the Cliff Dwellers, it's about an hour and a half to White Pocket. You'll eventually come across an old farmhouse with a sign pointing to the left. You'll also run into a few livestock gates that you'll need to open, and be sure to close as you continue on. The deep ruts carved into the soft sand almost locks you into position and feels a bit like a roller coaster, especially at higher speeds. Well, I just got done setting up the tent and I built a little trough around the tent just in case it rains, that it'll kind of uh, funnel some of the water off of the tent and not pool near the seams and things. And it's, you can hear the thunder. It's actually looking a little ominous out here. But that's okay. It's uh, an adventure. I arrived a bit late, so I thought I'd save the highlight for the next day. Near my camp were some bluffs to explore, where I found a place to sit while admiring the storm pass by. It wasn't long before the sun began to set. The clouds parted just in time to let the sun peek through. This is White Pocket.
After leaving White Pocket the next day, I headed north toward the Utah border, toward Highway 89. Along the way, I did several hikes. One that I would highly recommend is Wire Pass. Over 20 years ago, I came to this area, and I always thought the name of this uh, slot canyon that I'm in search of was Pariah Canyon, but that's actually the entire wilderness area, and I think I have finally found this uh, incredible slot canyon, but I'm actually not sure if I'm at the right trailhead. I'm at uh, Buck Springs, I think, or Buck, Buck something Gulch. Well, I just hiked a couple of miles and I ran across another hiker and I asked him how much farther the slot was and he said at least three miles. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've already gone two. So that's four round trip. And uh, so I'm gonna call it here and try and find the other trailhead. Well, I made it to the correct trail finally, which is the Wire Pass Trail. Unfortunately, as you can see behind me, there are some ominous clouds and this is a very dangerous area for flash floods. So I'm not gonna go that far into the slot. Um, just because you just don't know what the weather is doing um, upstream. So this is the start of the slot. After hiking around Wire Pass, I got on Highway 89, heading south, where I stopped for my last hike of the day. Off to see some toadstools. These amazing toadstool rock formations are in many areas of the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument, but this one is quite easy to reach and is just a short hike. That evening, I found a nice place to camp near Lake Powell. The following day, I explored some areas around the lake and even went for a swim. Lake Powell is a remarkable recreational area. It has more coastline than the entire west coast, over 2,000 miles. It's the second largest man-made lake in North America. And just below the Glen Canyon Dam that created Lake Powell is one of Arizona's most famous sites, Horseshoe Bend. As I headed back to the Valley of the Sun, I found a nice place to camp outside of Flagstaff before making my way back to Phoenix. While my intended destination was White Pocket, I ended up making this a road trip loop to some extraordinary places. I hope you enjoyed this video from Phoenix to White Pocket and beyond. If so, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more road trip travel videos. So until next time, we'll see you on the road.